you can leverage all kinds of skills in this industry and there's room for growth and room for good people and we need young talent to come in. You're listening to Bridge the Gap Season 5, a podcast dedicated to informing, educating and influencing the future of housing and services for seniors. Powered by sponsors AccuShield, Connected Living, Hamilton Captel, Inquire, One Day, LTC REIT, It's Never Too Late, Meridian Capital Group, Salinity, The Bridge Group Construction, and produced by Salinity Marketing. Welcome to Bridge the Gap Podcast, the senior living podcast with Josh and Lucas. We're in D.C. finishing up our thought leadership discussions here at the NIC conference. We've got a great friend on the program today. Many of you have seen him on panels before, and you know Marcus Van Ameringen. He is the vice president of business development at 12 Oaks. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Lucas and Josh and And Sarah, it's great to be here. Yes. Appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. Our listeners know that our faithful producer, Sarah, she's behind the camera making sure that we're hitting all our points and making sure that we're looking good and sounding good. So big thanks to our producer, Sarah, uh, just as you gave her that shout out right there. Well, today, what we're going to be talking about is your role in seniors housing because Mm -hmm. you have been on the forefront of these discussions for many years. Uh, You've spent a lot of time um, developing strong relationships uh, with investors on the real estate side and uh, have really made an impact in the industry at the various stages of your career. So we're excited to have you on. Walk us through a little bit of your origin story of how you transitioned into seniors housing. Right, I'll try and give you the cliff notes here. Sure. It was a career change for me when I got out of, uh, um, I did an MBA at Vanderbilt, and I was looking to go into the, you know, the Procter & Gamble route for uh, marketing, and then uh, an opportunity uh, opened up at uh, Life Care Centers America with Forrest Preston's group Yeah. uh, to be the director of market research. I uh, interviewed there, and I thought, you know, this could be great to, to be in an area where it's more of a people orientation, a, a, a direct impact on the lives of individuals. It was a growing company, very, very uh, aggressive growth. So I got hired there and uh, spent five years with them. Uh, great experience, everything from doing economic feasibility studies, CONs, in the early years, uh, I was on the heavily uh, interfacing with our uh, the company's uh, new developments on the uh, sk- skilled nursing, sure. and a lot of very innovative designs. I must say, I mean, they, uh, the company was building sniffs that actually look like a lot of assisted livings, and we're talking about the late '80s, early '90s. So that was innovative. We got a great experience there. Then moved to the senior housing division. American Lifestyles, and uh, ended up doing economic feasibility studies for external clients, consulting, internal consulting group, consulting to external clients, worked on a number of developments. So, uh, yeah, so I just, you know, stayed in the industry, uh, ended up uh, focusing on the marketing piece, both for the skilled nursing and the um, senior housing piece, and uh, uh, then moved to Atlanta, um, and the rest is history. I'm sure. to get into the details, but uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and and we've enjoyed seeing you. You've 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 moderated panels in the industry. Um, mm-hmm. You've been around these thought leaders, and so uh, now this week at the NIT conference, what have been your primary objectives here? We have a very s- large slate of of clients that we've met with, and you were actually in on one of the meetings with uh, a client out of uh, New York that we're looking to um, manage for. This was a broken bond deal, so a lot of it's just getting to meet people face-to-face. I think it's one of the beauties of the NET conference is you can be very efficient with your time and actually have people, you know, in a face-to-face meeting as opposed to everything on a video conference, and, and that we've done a lot of that. You know, it's, you know, essential for prep work, but... Um, so that's one of the goals is to meet with our investors on specific projects that were in, in the works. Also, you know, just to, uh, you know, be around um, decision makers 
and people who are who are making things happen in the industry. You know, you, you pick up ideas, uh, you know, uh, motivations from the strangest places. I'll have to tell us a little story. Uh, just even today, I ran into uh, Brian Preston, who uh, he and I shared offices together at Life Care in 1988. <laughs> We're both brand new and green in the industry. He's the son of the chairman. And I ran into him today with his son. And you know, he gave me a big bear hug. We hadn't seen each other yeah. in, what, 30-some years. Wow. And he's, you know, he's done very well uh, with his own company. Uh, so that's kind of neat, you know, those serendipitous type experiences. Yeah. So 12 Oaks story and strategy. <laughs> Uh, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about yeah. that and what, what's the strategy? Uh, it sounds like you guys, I'm hearing, are really growing quickly. So where are you seeing those opportunities? Where are you headed? Yes, yeah, so the growth is, is happening primarily this year, interestingly enough. Uh, a little bit of background, uh, 12 Oaks has been in the business some uh, 34, 35 years. Uh, you know, Dick Blaylock is the, is the chairman and sole owner, uh, and he kind of built the business with his dad. We have uh, owned and operated everything from in independent living to assisted living to memory care or a combination thereof. And uh, the company sold off three properties in 2018, 2019, uh, which was great timing, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, valuations. During 20 uh, and 21, I came on board with the company early 21. Uh, <clears throat> It was, it was a tough time to, you know, for everybody, you know, especially in terms of acquisitions, you know, trying to get valuations and the lenders weren't lending, you know, the debt markets, you know, all these kinds of things were up in turmoil and even on into the first part of this year. But we currently uh, are managing uh, 17 assisted living memory care properties as of today. We're start, uh, be bringing three more on starting um, uh, on Monday. And these are coming to us through our relationships with institutional investors. We primarily manage for institutional investors. Uh, you know, uh, we manage uh, 10 for uh, Blackstone and Longview, some others for CNL, um, and we've managed for, for PGM in the past, uh, Santiago Virtus, um, and other investors. So good relationships, stable relationships. It's looking like we may have another seven to 10 properties coming on board by December. Uh, so that's, you know, significant growth. We have beefed up operations, you know, the platform, the, salt, the basic platform's already always been in place. Sure. But, uh, you know, staffed up what we need. So a strategy is primarily third-party transition management. What we're seeing in the industry is a number of property. The investor community is maybe not so happy with the performance of some of the larger players, the operators, who have more of a cookie cutter approach, if you will. I'm not trying to be insulting, but there's more of a preference for solid regional players who are on the ground, they know the local players, they're heavily invested in the local market. So our strategy going forward is we're building the company to 30 properties and we'll probably just stabilize there. Uh, and um, primarily through, you know, third-party management contracts, but also as they present opportunities for, uh, as we build wealth for the investors, uh, you know, there's opportunities for ROFOs down the road, that kind of thing. Well, so uh, I'm really interested in that, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, transition um, work is not easy work. No. Oh. And uh, it takes a special team to, to be able to do that successfully. Uh, you've been with 12 Oaks now for a couple of years. What have, what have you been observing about the team that has made them some of the secret sauce that helps them through the transition uh, and, and being effective at that? Yeah, that's a great question. <clears throat> Josh, look, we don't have any magic bullets mm -hmm. or a secret sauce, if you will. I think part of the... The strength of, of 12 Oaks as an operating platform is we have what we call a high-touch model of operations, meaning uh, we allocate no more than four to five properties per regional vice president, 
And that regional has to be based in that geographical area where, it's, where those properties are focused. The advantage of that, several advantages, one is it br- brings them closer to daily interaction with the EDs and the whole teams. So the proximity, the high touch, you know, our regionals uh, have to be competent in operations and marketing and financial issues and kind of a jack of all trades, if you will, uh, rather than, uh, you know, having the uh, regional sales capability and regional other op- ops, we like to keep that real close. Yeah. Um, and it's worked well for the company. Uh, we also have, I think, another strength of the company is we have a, a real culture-focused uh, management. We do Harrison tests on, on, on staff, a lot of investment in training, especially on the sales side. Uh, you know, using the Sherpa CRM, relationship, relational-based selling, following up with the leads, uh, you know, making sure that it's well integrated and smooth, uh, you know, speed to lead, right? Right. All of that kind of thing. Another component is that we have an a, a, a internal solutions consulting group. of uh, These are uh, seasoned people, uh, you know, most of them were former EDs, you know, vice presidents in various capacities who are available to step in. For example, if, if you have an ED leave, instead of, you know, having a gap there for three weeks and having a traveler who, who, who doesn't have that knowledge of the, uh, of the local community, I think it's very important to preserve the culture mm-hmm. and the continuity. You want to keep your staff really focused and not to, oh, we lost our ED. You know, is the thing going to fall apart? No, 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 no. So our regional consultants can just jet in, if you will, and sit in that spot for uh, two or three weeks, ensure the continuity of of culture, management. Uh, I can go on. Yeah. But those are some of the Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. Well, and I would imagine that high-touch model, not only good for Mm -hmm. continuity of care, quality of care in those communities in those transition times uh, in particular, but also probably gives you a leg up in the recruitment of great team because I can't tell you, you know, I went up through the regional ranks and when you're covering um, multiple, multiple states, uh, you're away from home more than your home and yep. you mm-hmm. spend most of your time in, in airplanes yep. and, and yep. cars, yep. Um, it becomes very difficult. I think that's fueled a lot of the burnout in our industry for our regional levels of management. So I, I can only imagine, um, having smaller, tighter uh, ge- geography and having fewer properties to manage that you can focus on quality and relationships. So that gives you an opportunity to potentially get some great talent in, in those roles as well, which is uh, tough to do in the market that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah it's a great observation, Josh. Um, and you know, that model may work for, for larger companies. Uh, in a sense, it has to work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the economics, but it's not ideal. Uh, and what we're finding is more in the more of the investors, even you know some of them are non-traded and some uh, you know uh, REITs are looking more at a regional model that works yeah. and having people on the ground because they understand you know everybody understands that it's a local business and it's very hard to to be supportive of the the operations at the local level if you're in the air. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're in five states, it's like. It's probably not an ideal relationship or right. structure. Well, uh, you know, you were talking about efficiency of meeting Lucas, Nick. What an awesome place for us to be able to talk to great talent like this all in one place. Yeah. These guys are so busy, so how blessed are we to be able to sit down at the microphone and, and pick brains and things like that. So it's that's awesome. right. That's right. right, and I'll put a plug in for Lucas, too. So Yeah, hey, that's uh, good. <laughs> I guess you that. cashed that check. More that of that. Saying. More of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, from a practical standpoint, so, you know, Lucas most recently did a major, his company, uh, Bridge Construction, did a major renovation for us. And that was, as I understand, it was brought on by uh, Longview, right? Yeah. Because uh, they are the owners. Uh, and, uh, you know, what, uh, what, a million, what? what yeah, it, it was um, probably around 1.2 range, yeah. Yeah, it's a big project. I looked at the property, uh, some of the pictures, because I, I came in at, at the, when it was already done, pretty much, you know, transformed the, you know, the layout of the building. It's in a high 
high growth market, you know, uh, high high end product. And so, you know, you're up against new builds. Mm -hmm. And it was critical to get a comparable product to the new builds with the same amenities uh, to be competitive in that market. Uh, Well, they did a beautiful job. And, you know, uh, we don't. Obviously, Lucas, I, I'm glad that he brought that up because, you know, just like you guys are, are really a specialist uh, regional operator growing, specializing in this transition culture, yep. also transitioning the, the properties to be relevant again. I mean, so Lucas, right. just like you guys are in a very specialized market, and obviously it says a lot about you guys to have vetted and, and sought out someone that was equally as specialized to be able to tailor something very special for that community. So uh, that's what Lucas does every day. Uh, so you guys are kindred spirit. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, we understand, you know, and, um, and Lucas understands this even more, but, you know, you got you to gotta know the local market to be able to get the subs, right? And, sure. And know the quality of work and, you know, can you have continuity and um, and have the regional structure, and you got people in various places. I'm, I'm not telling him what he is. Sure. Well, but it makes sense. It makes sense on a lot of different ways because I, f- I was in a former role where I was covering projects throughout the southeast and even a little bit further, and productivity execution suffered, um, which has always been really the genesis around um, me wanting to really focus greatly on the state of Texas personally yeah. um, because – I'm able to establish myself. I'm able to control quality. I'm able to control control continuity and control outcome. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I like I said, I've been in, in Texas about a year and a half. I, you don't really realize how big it is to <laughs> get there. I mean, yeah, you, know, uh, you can take a plane flight two to three hours, and you're still in Texas. It's like, oh, really. Yeah, uh, just, it's a great state, yeah, which means so. lots of opportunity. And there's a lot of opportunity. With all yeah. the challenges, there's all of these innovative, emerging business models and specialties. That's what's exciting to me. There's, we've had so much vanilla in our industry just in my short 17 years in the industry, and with all of our challenges, I think what it's creating. One of our guests said yesterday that we were talking to, it's like uh, we're going from three channels. To 700 cable channels now, and yes, uh, right, which right. is exciting because you know that's what people want. Uh, they want variation. Not everybody wants the same thing. So, uh, every management company, every contractor, every specialist is not created equal, and we all have our, our strengths and weaknesses. So it's exciting to see your growth. Congratulations! Thank you. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to Twelve Oaks. What an awesome time that we've had to spend with you here at Nick. And hope that your conference is awesome. Well, thank you, Josh. And, um, you know, it's, I feel like, you know, I've been in multiple roles over the some 30 years I've been in the industry and uh, have enjoyed them all. Uh, you know, transitioned from marketing through to brokerage and then consulting and, and, and now back on the provider side. And I would encourage anybody, you know, especially young people who are looking at an industry where, you know, it's, it's not sexy. Uh, it's not a Google, it's not a high tech, uh, but you can leverage all kinds of skills in this industry and there's room for growth and room for good people. And we need young talent to come in and be patient. That's one of the things because it is a, a pretty mature industry in some respects, but, but there's opportunity for a, innovation in virtually every area. Right. And so, um, and you know, it's it's a satisfaction of knowing that you're making a difference at whatever level or or, uh, interfacing in the industry, whether it be housing, you know, acquisitions, uh, you name it, you know. Every discipline. Well, and that's such a great phrase there. You know, it, it made me think, you know, the industry may not be high tech, but it's high reward because yeah. of the work that you do. You have an opportunity to do great work in this industry. Right. Yeah. Well, Thanks thank for you. your time, Marcus. This has been a fun conversation. Thanks, guys. Uh, we know that you have other meetings, and uh, we're going to get you back to that. And for our listeners that want to connect with Marcus and 12 Oaks, you can go to the show notes and hit those links right there. You can go to btgvoice.com, connect with all of our content there. We want to see you on social. LinkedIn's a great channel for us. Let's continue the conversations there. Connect with Josh, Lucas, and Sarah and Marcus there on LinkedIn. 
And thanks for everybody for listening to another great episode of Bridge the Gap. Thanks for listening to Bridge the Gap podcast with Josh and Lucas. Connect with the BTG Network team and use your voice to influence the industry by connecting with us at btgvoice.com.